a bunch of don'ts for your wrestling resume, and maybe a do. Next. I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. Right here on my channel, I make videos for fellow pro wrestlers at every single stage of their careers. And I do this because for the first three years I was an active pro, I didn't have a mentor to guide me, nor did I have a coach to teach me. And I really believe that lack of access to veteran wisdom, knowledge, and experience played a significant role in my failure to achieve my ultimate career goal. And I don't want that to happen to somebody else. I don't want that to happen to you. So if you're down with the mission of Till We Make It, go ahead, join the Till We Make It tribe, subscribe down below. Or if you want to take your support and participation to the next level, look in the descriptus for a link to my Patreon, where for as little as $5 a month, you'll instantly unlock access to our private Discord, plus more than 250 exclusive posts. And at the top tier, my master tier on Patreon, you'll be part of our monthly live call where I offer feedback and analysis on my master tier patrons latest promos and matches. This is top of mind because we just got the group together a couple days before I am recording this one for you. Now to the matter at hand about pro wrestling resumes, which have been a standard for as long as I've been in wrestling and probably were long before I came along. Having a neatly curated pro wrestling resume confers a sense of professionalism upon you. And there definitely are wrestling organizations out there where you can't get a tryout. You're not going to get an audition. You will not get your foot in the door unless you have a pro wrestling resume. In case you haven't seen it, I do already have a video on the channel about wrestling resumes and your demo package. And I'm going to link you to that at the end of today's video. Don't worry, but for now, let's talk about a couple things you don't want on your wrestling resume. Okay, up first, because you don't want your wrestling resume to be two pages long, you need it all to fit neatly on one page without reducing to six-point aerial font to get that to happen, avoid listing every single seminar you've ever attended. This has really become a trend in recent years. Take it from a guy who's seen more than his share of wrestling resumes. This is not helpful information to your cause. If you want to highlight two or three very special ones you've attended and then mention that you've been to dozens more or whatever is appropriate there, go ahead and do that. It's good to convey to whomever is reading it that you are constantly reinvesting in your own education as a performer. That's a positive but just a giant run-on list of names of seminars and the people who taught them in the middle of your resume, I don't think this is helpful. I think that gets skipped over and that's eating up valuable real estate on that one page you have to sell them on you. A second one we gotta talk about is this. Do not list every single tournament you've ever participated in on your wrestling resume. Just like the seminars you've attended, this is eating up too much valuable real estate on that one page you've got. So great, you've been in 20, 30, 50 different tournaments. Just highlight one or two that are especially important to you or noteworthy. If you were in the Mae Young Classic, yeah, I would list that on your wrestling resume, but you don't need to follow by listing 25 other tournaments that you were in. Again, you can find a way to just highlight a couple key ones and make it clear you are an active working pro without gobbling up all that space on your wrestling resume. Impress them with a couple well-chosen tournaments rather than trying to overwhelm them with the quantity. This third one I see on way too many wrestling resumes. You do not need to list every championship title you've ever held. It's pointless. If you've only held one or two, well, yeah, go ahead, put them both on there. But otherwise, 
consider what it is that you are trying to communicate to the person reading your resume. I think it would be fine to say something like, I was the AAA mega heavyweight champion for a period of two years when I served as top star of the company, in addition to dozens of other championships I've held around the world. That does so much more than just a giant endless list of companies and weight divisions and length of duration of your title reigns ever could. And you don't need to list the name of every wrestling organization you've ever worked for. Pick a couple to highlight and that's sufficient. Even back when MySpace was relevant and who was in your top eight seemed really important, I'd already wrestled for more than 200 separate wrestling organizations. Just listing all of them on my wrestling resume did me no favors. I just needed to pick a couple select ones that represent my body of work well. That's all my wrestling resume needed to have on it, and it's all yours needs to have on it. If you just started touring overseas, make sure to get a little bit of that sprinkled in there, but you don't need to go overboard with any of it. A question I was asked very recently is, do I need to have print copies of my wrestling resume? And I think for the most part, the answer is no, you don't, but it becomes a yes if the wrestling company you are applying to wants you to send a hard copy of your demo package through the snail mail, then yeah, you're going to need a print copy to put in that demo pack. There are still wrestling organizations that require that. But of course, things are trending more digital, and that trend is not likely to be reversed. It's possible you'll never need a print copy. So having said that, you absolutely need to have a digital copy of your wrestling resume and you need it to be in a common file type that can be read by any machine. And both PCs and Macs can easily open PDF files. So my recommendation to you is you save your wrestling resume as a PDF. And what are you going to do with this digital version of your wrestling resume? Well, of course, you want it handy in case you need to attach it to an email, obviously, but you also want to upload a copy into your professional Dropbox. I think anyone trying to find work in professional wrestling today needs to have a professional Dropbox. Doesn't matter if you're a wrestler, you're a referee, you're a ringside manager, doesn't matter. You need a professional Dropbox and it must contain seven items. I detail all seven of them and walk you through the construction of a wrestling resume in the video appearing up here right now. I want to pause and give thanks to a couple of my newest patrons like Aaron and Thomas and Jug with the G and the apostrophe. Thanks so much for your patronage. If you want to join us, you know that link's down below in the descriptus. We'd love to have you.